would you do if you grew to the size of a house? And what if this happened while you were inside of a house? <laughs> How would you ever get out? Well, hi there, Reader Adventure, and welcome to Storytime for Kids. I'm Mrs. McCurley, and today we are continuing with Chapter 4 of Alice's Adventures in Wonderland by Lewis Carroll where we will encounter again the white rabbit and learn whether he's friend or foe. Let's get started. Chapter four, the rabbit sends in a little bill. It was the white rabbit trotting slowly back again and looking anxiously as he went as if he had lost something and she heard it muttering to itself, the Duchess, the Duchess, oh my dear paws, oh my fur and whiskers, she'll get me executed as sure as ferrets or ferrets. Where can I have dropped them, I wonder? Alice guessed in a moment that it was looking for the fan and the white kid gloves, and she very good naturedly began to hunt for them. But they were nowhere to be seen. Everything seemed to have changed since her swim in the pool. And the great hall with the glass table and the little door had vanished completely. Very soon, the rabbit noticed Alice as she went hunting about and called out to her in an angry tone. Why, Marianne, what are you doing here? Run home this minute and fetch me a pair of gloves and a fan. Quick now! And Alice was so much frightened that she ran off all at once and in the direction he'd pointed to, without trying to explain the mistake it had made. <laughs> he took me for a housemaid, she said to herself as she ran. <laughs> How surprised he'll be when he finds out who I really am. But I better take him his fan and gloves, that is, if I can find them. As she said this, she came upon a neat little house on the door with the bright brass plate with the name W. Rabbit engraved upon it. She went in without knocking and hurried upstairs in a great fear lest she should meet the real Marianne and be turned out of the house before she'd found the fan and the gloves. <clears throat> How queer it seems, Alice said to herself, to be going messages for a rabbit. I suppose Dinah will be sending me on messages next. And she began fancying the sort of thing that would happen. Miss Alice, come here directly and get me ready for your walk. <laughs> Coming in a minute, nurse. But I think I've got to see that the mouse doesn't get out. Only, I don't think, Alice went on, that they'd let Dinah stop in the house anymore <laughs> if it began ordering people around like that. By this time, she'd found her way into a tidy little room with a table in front of the window. And on it, as she'd hoped, was the fan and two or three pairs of white kid gloves. She took up the fan and a pair of gloves and was just going to leave the room when her eye fell upon a little bottle that stood near the looking glass. There was no label this time with any words like, drink me, but nevertheless, she uncorked it and put it to her lips. I know something interesting is sure to happen, she said to herself, whenever I eat or drink anything. <laughs> so I'll just see what this bottle does. I do hope it'll make me grow large again, for really, I'm quite tired of being such a tiny thing. It did so indeed, <gasps> and much sooner than she'd expected. Before she drunk half the bottle, she found her head <gasps> pressing against the ceiling and had to stoop to save her neck from being broken. <gasps> She hastily put down the bottle, saying to herself, ah, that's quite enough. I hope I shan't grow any more. As it is, I can't even get out the door. I do wish I hadn't drunk quite so much. Alas, it was too late to wish that. She went on growing and growing and growing, and very soon she had to kneel down on the floor. In another minute, there was not even room for this and she tried the effect of lying down with one elbow against the door and the other arm curled around her head. 
Still, she went on growing. And as a last resource, she put one arm out of the window and one foot up the chimney and said to herself, now I can do no more. Whatever happens, what will become of me? <coughs> Luckily for Alice, the little magic bottle had now had its full effect. So she grew no larger, but still it was very uncomfortable. And as there seemed to be no sort of chance of ever getting her out of the room again, no wonder she felt unhappy. It was much pleasanter at home, thought poor Alice, when one doesn't always go around growing larger and smaller and being ordered about by mice and rabbits. I almost wish I hadn't gone down that rabbit hole. And yet, yet, it's rather curious, you know, <laughs> this sort of life. I do wonder what can have happened to me. When I used to read fairy tales, I fancied that kind of thing never happened. And now, here I am in the middle of one. <gasps> and when I grow up, I'll write one. But, well, I'm grown up now, she added in a sorrowful tone. At least there's no more room to grow up anymore here. But then, thought Alice, shall I never get any older than this? Hmm, that'll be a comfort. That way, I'll never have to be an old woman. But then, oh, I'll always have lessons to learn. Oh, I shouldn't like that. Oh, you foolish Alice, she answered herself. How can you learn lessons in here? Why, there's hardly even room for you. And no room at all for any lesson books. And so she went on, taking first one side <laughs> and then the other and making quite a conversation of it all together. But after a few minutes, she heard a voice outside and stopped to listen. Mary Ann, Mary Ann, said the voice, fetch me my gloves this moment. Then came a little pattering of feet on the stairs. <laughs> Alice knew it was the rabbit coming to look for her, and she trembled till she shook the house, quite forgetting that now she was about a thousand times as large as the rabbit and had no reason to be afraid of it. Presently, the rabbit came up to the door and tried to open it. But as the door opens inwards and Alice's elbow was pressed hard against it, that attempt proved a failure. Alice heard it say to itself, then I'll go round and get in at the window. That you won't, thought Alice. And after waiting till she fancied she heard the rabbit just under the window, she suddenly spread out her hand and made a snatch in the air. She did not get hold of anything, but she heard a little shriek and a fall and a crash of broken glass, <gasps> from which she concluded that it was just possible it had fallen into a cucumber frame or something of the sort. Next came an angry voice, the rabbits. Pat, Pat, where are you? And then a voice she'd never heard before. Sure then, I'm here digging for apples, your honor. Digging for apples indeed, said the rabbit angrily. Here, come and help me out with this. Sounds of more broken glass. Now, tell me, Pat, what's in that window? Um, sure, it's, a, it's an arm, your honor. An arm? You goose! Whoever saw one that size, why, it fills the whole window. Sure it does, Your Honor, but it's an arm for all that. Well, it's got no business there. At any rate, go and take it away. There was a long silence after this, and Alice could only hear whoosh, 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 whispers now and then, such as, Sure, I don't like it, yet it honor it all, it all. Do as I tell you, you coward. And at last she spread out her hand again and made another snatch in the air. This time, there were two little shrieks and more sounds of broken glass. <laughs> what a number of cucumber frames there must be, thought Alice. I wonder what they'll do next. As for pulling me out of the window, I only wish they could. I'm not sure I don't want to stay here any longer. She waited for some time without hearing anything more. At last, 
came a rumbling of little cartwheels and the sound of a good many voices all talking together. She made out the words, Where's the other ladder? Why, I hadn't to bring but one. Bill's got the other. Bill, fetch it here, lad. Here, put him up in this corner. No, tie him together first. They don't reach half as high enough yet. Oh, they'll do well enough. Don't be particular. Here, Bill, catch hold of this rope. Will the roof bear? Mind that house, Slate. Oh, it's coming down. Heads below. A large crash. Now, who did that? It was Bill, I fancy. Who's to go down the chimney? Nay, I shan't. You do it. That I won't. Then I... Bill's to go down. Here, Bill. The master says you're to go down the chimney. <laughs> oh, so Bill's got to come down the chimney, has he? Said Alice to herself. Shh. They seem to put everything upon Bill. I wouldn't be in Bill's place for a good deal. This fireplace is narrow, to be sure. But I think I can kick it a little. She drew her foot as far down the chimney as she could and waited till she heard a little animal. She couldn't guess what sort it was. Scratching and scrambling about in the chimney close above her. Then, saying to herself, this is Bill, she gave one sharp kick and just waited to see what would happen next. The first thing she heard was a general chorus of, there goes Bill. Then the rabbit's voice, catch him by the hedge. Then silence. And then another confusion of voices, hold up his head. Brandy now, don't choke him. How was it, old fellow? What happened to you? Tell us all about it. Last came a little feeble, squeaking voice. That's Bill, thought Alice. Well, I hardly know. No more, thank ye. I'm, uh, I'm better now, but I'm, I'm a good deal too flustered to tell you. All I know is something comes at me like a jack-in-the-box, and up I go like the sky rocket. So you did, old fellow, said the others. We must burn down the house, said the rabbit's voice. And Alice called out as loud as she could, If you do, I'll set Dinah at you. There was a dead silence, instantly. And Alice thought to herself, I wonder what they'll do next. If they had any sense, they'd take off the roof. After a minute or two, they began moving about again. Alice heard the rabbit say, A barrel fill will do to begin with. Hmm. A barrel full of what? thought Alice. But she had not long to doubt. For the next moment, a shower of little pebbles came rattling in at the window, and some of them hit her in the face. I must put a stop to this, she said to herself, and shouted out, You'd better not do that again. Which produced another dead silence. Alice noticed with some surprise that the pebbles were all turning into little cakes as they lay on the floor. And a bright idea came into her head. If I eat one of those cakes, she thought, <laughs> it's sure to make some change in my size. And as it can't possibly make me larger, it must make me smaller, I suppose. So she swallowed one of the cakes and was delighted to find that she began shrinking directly. As soon as she was small enough to get through the door, she ran out of the house and found quite a crowd of little animals and birds waiting outside. The poor little lizard, Bill, was in the middle being held up by two guinea pigs who were giving it something out of a bottle. They all made a rush at Alice at the same moment she appeared, but she ran off as fast as she could and soon found herself <sighs> safe in a thick wood. The first thing I've got to do, said Alice to herself as she wandered about in the wood, is to grow my right size again. And the second thing is to find my way 
back to that little garden. <laughs> and I think that will be the best plan. It sounded an excellent plan, no doubt, and very neatly and simply arranged. The only difficulty was that she had not the smallest idea how to set about it. And while she was peering about anxiously among the trees, a little sharp bark just over her head made her look up in a great hurry. An enormous puppy was looking down at her with large, round eyes and feebly stretched out one paw, trying to touch her. Oh, poor little thing, said Alice in a coaxing tone, and she tried hard to whistle to it. But she was terribly frightened all the time at the thought that, well, it might be hungry, in which case it would be very likely to eat her in spite of all of her coaxing. Hardly knowing what she did, she picked up a little bit of a stick and held it out to the puppy. Whereupon the puppy jumped into the air off all of his feet, <laughs> let out a yelp of delight and rushed at the stick and at her. Alice dodged behind a great thistle to keep herself from being run over. And the moment she appeared on the other side, the puppy made another rush for the stick. <laughs> then Alice, thinking it was very like having a game of play and expecting it every moment to get trampled under its feet, ran round the thistle and then the puppy began a series of short charges at the stick, running a very little way forwards each time and a long way back and barking hoarsely all the while, till at last it sat down a good way off panting with its tongue hanging out of its mouth and its great eyes shut. This seemed to Alice a good opportunity for making her escape. So she set off at once and ran till she was quite tired and out of breath until the puppy's bark sounded quite far away in the distance. And yet what a dear little puppy it was, said Alice as she leant against a buttercup to rest herself and fanned herself with one of the leaves. I should have liked teaching it tricks <laughs> very much, and if I'd only been the right size to do it. Oh dear, I'd nearly forgotten that I have to grow up again. Hmm, let me see, how is it to be managed? I suppose I ought to eat or drink something or other, but the great question is what? The great question certainly was what? Alice looked all around her at the flowers and the blades of grass, but she did not see anything that looked like the right thing to eat or drink under the circumstances. There was a large mushroom growing near her about the same height as herself. And when she had looked under it and on both sides of it and behind it, it occurred to her that she might as well look and see what was on top of it. She stretched herself up on tiptoe and peeped over the edge of the mushroom and her eyes immediately met those of a large caterpillar that was sitting on top with its arms folded, quietly smoking a hookah and taking not the slightest notice of her or anything else. Oh, can you believe that Alice grew so big that she filled up an entire house? <laughs> Be sure to join us next week for Chapter 5, where Alice's adventures in Wonderland continue. And thanks so much for being a reader adventurer. Until our next video, happy story time!